Christ Kingdom Builders is a family-based organization. We believe in encouraging, equipping, and empowering the generations. So I'm just believing that because of the invitation, he's going to show up. He's already shown up for me. I want to talk to you today, if I may. Be sure the recording's on. Cued me up. I want to talk to you today about how to be successful. We've been talking about God's Word mixed with faith. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about God's Word mixed with faith and attitude. You got to have a certain kind of attitude about this thing. Because God would have us to be successful. And just slow down with me and flow with me, if you mind. Because of the fact everybody has like it or not, everybody has a attitude. You got an attitude. You have an attitude when you got up this morning. You, you have good attitudes and bad attitudes. Jesus would go on to talk about having the type of attitude that addressed, uh, the, he called them, we call them after it was interpreted, the be attitudes, be blessed. And so we want to talk to you a little bit today about how to be successful in life. The proverb writer says in Proverbs 4, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Notice what he says in the 22nd verse as you listen. He says these words, For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. In the 23rd verse it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Now, in Joshua chapter 1, you can go back. In Joshua chapter 1, the word of the Lord tells me the, the, that God is giving us instruction on how to be successful in life. Read it with me if you don't mind. I don't, care. I, I don't mind you reading it with me. It says, this book of the law, y'all come on, this book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest, according to all, for then thou shalt, you're going to make whose way? Whose way? You will make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And so when God gives you, he says, I'm going to give you good success, that's, he's emphasizing you're not going to have a little of success in doing this, but you're going, to, you're going to abound because you are energized and you're thinking like I want you to think. So everybody wants some type of success, and I'm going, to tell you, I'm going to drop something on you, whether you're young or old, whether you're in high school, grade school, or in uh, graduated, and that you're in your own type of business, no matter what endeavor you are in, I'm going to give you the key to be a successful you. So say, I want to be successful at what I'm doing. Now, you babies, y'all pay attention because even though that you're young, you can learn something here that will help you in life. God said to the proverb writer that we're to keep our hearts with all diligence, for out of your heart will come the issues of life. Now, when I got a little bit older, the first time I heard someone say they got issues, I'm scratching my head. What are they talking about? When, when someone says so-and-so's got issues, they're really saying they got some real serious problems. And, I'm gonna, and God is saying, I'm going to show you you don't have serious problems if you're putting my word in your heart. Because the heart represents the center of your very being. Who you are is where your heart is. And so God is saying, it's going to be your source. It's going to be the source of your desires. It's, your heart is the source of the decisions you and I might make. Whether good or bad, 
The decision maker is going to be in my heart. Help me now. Help me now. But God is saying, for out of the heart, out of the heart, I'm going to do, that's where I'm going to do my work. And our hearts will either be pleasing to God or not pleasing to God. I wish I could get some help. I said, it's going to, whatever is in my heart. See, God, man look at appearance. God looks at the heart. I want to say it to the center. I said, men look at your appearance. They look on if you got your makeup on. They'll look at if your hair is done. They'll look at what kind of clothes you get on, got on. But God looks at your heart. And he doesn't care what kind of clothes you may have on. God doesn't care about your pedigree. God looks at where your heart and what's in your heart. Amen? Can I get a stronger witness in that? I've come to learn that success is not a destination. Success is not a destination thing. Success, I'm going to say it to this side. Go back, go back. Success, success is a daily thing. It's what I do daily. Daily I tell my girl I love her. Daily I said you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Daily I let her know how much I love her. So I'm talking about uh, it, it, for me to be successful, it's a daily thing. No one starts off and says, our destination is a state championship. Huh? That's a goal. But I know that for me to be successful when state championship tournament comes around, I better have done the daily thing. I bet I should have been doing the daily drills. I should have been doing the daily plays. I should have been working on my own skills all by myself. I bet, whoa, shay, shay. And so uh, in order for me to be successful, I, I, I have an image of where I'm going, but success is not a destination thing. It's a daily thing. And that's why God says, keep thy heart for with all diligence, come on here, come on here, come on here. For out of it will flow the issues of my life. And this is out of my heart going to flow my success on a daily basis. Paul said we need to fight a good fight. Well, in order to fight a good fight, I better be built up on the inside. And you've heard me say from time to time, you better have eaten your Wheaties. And God said, your Wheaties is my word. I wish I'd get some help here. You don't need to be lucky. I don't depend on luck. See, some people think success is luck. So, so it was born rich. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, success is... Is not dependent upon how lucky. I don't get success out of a lotto. I didn't, I didn't hit no numbers. I wasn't born with a silver spoon. But I was born into a family that taught the word of God. And I learned how to, my daddy used to say, son, if you're looking for a helping hand, stretch out your arm. At the end of your arm, there is your helping hand. Go to work. Help me now. Help me now. You need to know what's going to be my, what I call the factor for my success. It's going to be my attitude. I said, everybody's got an attitude. But what's your attitude? Do you have stinking thinking? Like Zig Ziglar used to say, yeah, you, if you have stinking thinking, you need to have a, a brainwash. You see, everybody takes a bath on a daily basis. I hope so. I need to have a brainwash on a daily basis. Help me now so I can keep the right, everybody say the right attitude. And so I don't get so bent out of shape of who I think I am. Getting, you know, going out with my head stuck up and all kind of, of, of I'm better than so and so type of attitude. Because all you'll do is drown when it rains. But listen, but when you walk in humility, that you realize my source is God. And, I, I, and he's the one I got to please the most. And so therefore, child of God, I go before the Lord and I go before people with a joyous heart. Have you ever noticed that grateful people are joyful people? 
I got a couple of amens. I'm going to sidebar, and I'm going to, I want to ask you to just listen to me as I read Psalm 112. If I can get it, pull it up real quick. Psalm 112. Psalm 112, I'm going to read the NLT version. How joyful are those who fear the Lord. Look out. Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children are, will be successful everywhere. Wait a minute, did you hear that? Those who fear God, those who praise God, their children shall be successful. And it says everywhere. Say everywhere. They, an entire generation of godly people will be blessed. Listen to the third verse in the NLT. They themselves will be wealthy and their good deeds will last forever. Those who praise the Lord. And fear the Lord, they will have an X factor on their children, and they themselves will be wealthy. Now, wealth is, a lot of people will associate wealth with money. But when the Bible talks about wealth, it's talking about every area of your life. Turn to somebody and say, doing good. Turn to somebody else and say, doing good. Paul shoots from the straight. He tells us we really have joy in our lives in Philippians 4 and 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. So those people that are, have a smile on their face, even though they might be going through things, but they know who their source is. They know that God is with them. Hey, and if God, you've heard me say, if God is with me, that's more than is against me. And so, therefore, I don't worry. I sense I'm just cast all my care upon him who cares for me. Amen? So, have you ever seen what I call the GCM? That's a person for an acronym of a grumpy church member. They're the church members most likely to complain about everything. They're persistent critics of the pastor, staff, choir. They just complain about everything. And, and, and the difference is they have been hooked by what I call the bad, stinking, thinking attitude. And they stay in a cycle. And, you know, I learned that I don't want to be hooked up in no cycle. If there is a cycle for me, I want to be hooked in the success factor. I never was able to make a sale when I was grumpy. I never was able to, to, to make a new client being grumpy. Complaining about my company, complaining about my product, and complaining about I'm having a bad day. All I did was for them was say, thank you very much. I don't need your service. Have a good day. But when, no matter if I made a sale or not for that day, if I had a joyful attitude and I smiled about it and, and I went in, and sometimes I just threw, uh, I would, sometimes when I was having a bad day, I, would go, I was down in Little Dixie. And that's in, in Oklahoma. And, and their little Dixies, not everybody's glad to see a brown-skinned man walk in. But I can remember this one particular day, I went in there and I had a smile. I was selling insurance door to door on a commission. And I remember it saying, there's the owner or manager here, and I was smiling. I was just so glad because I knew that I knew this guy was going to buy what I had to sell. And I remember spreading the, all of my material out there on the, on the desk. And, and I said, well, let's look at this one and, and begin to go through the product line. And I said, can you use this one? And I said, this one might fit you. And the next thing I know, that guy bought all my products. Because that I was not having a stinking thinking attitude, but I had a joyful attitude that things were going to work out. I'm trying to teach you something. I got some people in here that are in sales. I got some people in here that are selling their, their, their intelligence every day. Because when you're standing in front of a teacher, and if you've got stinking thinking, pretty soon they'll turn you off. 
But if you've got a smile on your face and that you're smiling and glad to be in class and you just can't wait to be in that, let them know. I'm just so glad to be in your class today. I, can't, I couldn't wait to get here. I'm telling you, you have just won your... You've won that class. Say a joyful attitude. I call that a JCM, a joyful church member. That's right. I'm glad to be here. I'm striving for the next level. Say striving for the next level. When you are striving for the next level, I think you're going, you're going, you'll find that I, I need to make sure. That, say I got daily goals. I think I missed something here that I wanted you to get. I want you, you know, successful people have daily goals. Successful people, they see that I'm, I, I got the long range down the road, but I, in order for me to get where I'm going, I have daily goals. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm, Pastor Daryl and I, have gone, we've set a, a daily goal that we're going to walk every morning now. Because I've decided that I want to go into my 80s when that time comes fit. Because I plan on preaching at least another 20 years. And so, therefore, yeah, until, until he calls me home. Because he didn't say I got a retirement plan. Back up, back that one up. I want to get this one in here. Make it your goal to grow every day. Why, why preach it? Say, it's the daily goals that will give me my long-term success. It's the daily goals of reading the Word of God that give me Scripture memory. It's the daily goals that causes me to exercise a certain area of my life, whether it's spiritual, mental, or physical, that I will grow. You know the difference in some people that can shoot free throws in practice but can't make one in the game? Say attitude. I used, to, I used to know some people like that I played with. Watch them shoot free throws all day in practice, but when it came game time, they couldn't throw it in the ocean. <laughs> A winner says, it's my time, I'm going to shine. A winner says, even though my knees may be shaking, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. A winner says, I, you, may have made, you may have taken me down one time, but all I need to do is pin you in order to walk away from here with a victory. You are mine. God has given me the strength. I'm say, I have the anointing to win. Ah, Y'all didn't say that like you really mean it, children. You ought to say, I have the anointing to win. The Holy Ghost is with me. The Holy Spirit is on me. I practice with him every day. I know who I am. For I have the presence of God himself. You in trouble today. It's an attitude. If you want to win in life, how many of y'all want to win? How many of y'all want to be successful in life? I'm, try, I'm pouring my heart out to you and I'm revealing to you some of the secrets that have helped me. You see, I sold, I sold insurance, I sold coatings. That was a high industrial type paint. And I went into places where sometimes it would be a little intimidating, but I had an attitude. I worked I, I, as I was flying, whether I was driving, now if I was sitting at lunch, I was working on me. Not, until I, not waiting until I got to the assignment, but I worked on me every day to back it up one more time just stay right there go back go forward now say keep the right focus you have to have focus on where you're going 
And I did, I did a sermon series on laser faith. Y'all remember that? You got to have a pinpoint accuracy. This is what I'm working on. You can't see somebody else working on something and say, well, I'm going to do that. No, you need to be working on you. Whether it's your speech, whether it's learning how to write, if it's improving your reading, no matter what it is, you need to be focused on what area you're going to improve on today. Y'all still with me? All right. Here's the key. Here's something that I learned. Children, look at me. Look at Pastor right here. This is a secret. I learned this concept many years ago. Leaders are readers. And readers and leaders and leaders are readers. Readers are leaders and leaders are readers. And if you're not working on improvement, if you're, if you're not seeking to get better, you'll always be the same. I said, if you're not trying to get better, you're always going to be the same. You know what? I, as I shared, I think it was last Sunday. And my wife has this, sometimes she has this talent. She'll be moved by something. And she come in and she said, you know, this room needs painting. As a man, I'm going, I'm fine with it. But she goes, you know, I think I'm tired of this color. What's, what am I trying to say? You ought to be trying to get better in whatever area you need to get better in. If, if it's speech, guess what you ought to work on? You ought to work on your speech. You ought to begin to, begin to, you know, I was not born a preacher. Matter of fact, I didn't like standing in front of people to even speak five minutes. Sure enough, wouldn't want to stand and give a solo. I still don't like to sing solo even today. I can't do anything about singing solo because I don't feel like I need to work in that area. But I sure enough remember how God began to train me up to be a preacher. Now, when I didn't like to stand in front of somebody, my wife comes in one day and said, we're going to make some money doing this, but you need to be the one to speak. <laughs> Say, strive to get better. Here's something I learned, too, and I'm going to teach it to you all here. Now, listen to me. All you young people, all you kids and students, all you young people, all you young at heart people, that means you're older than... You ain't in school no more. Say, turn to somebody and say, here's a rule for success. Say, pay now, play later. You pay now, you get to play later. I used to have this one particular friend when I was in college. He would always come into my room, and I'm trying to study, but he'd come into my room want to play my records. Why? He'd already done his study. He'd already performed in the area of academics. And I would tell him, I don't have time for that. I'm trying to study. Uh, and then there would be those times when you'd have an assignment due on Monday, and your friends want to go out on Friday. Am I talking to anybody still in school? And if you hadn't finished your, what your assignment was, here's what you put in your mind. I'll do it Sunday night. How many of y'all know you should have done it Friday? I learned as I got older, <coughs> as I got older, I learned to pay now. Do it on Friday. I don't care if they're going to a party on Friday night. I'm not in school to party. I'm in school to get out of here. Say, pay me now, I can play later. No matter if it's in school, no matter if it's on work, no matter what it is, if it's a task to be done, I do it when? Say what? Say, do it now. Learn to do it now. I call it delayed gratification. Come on now. 
I said, come on now. I need to learn to pay now, play later. So I'm going to give you four habits. You know that habits are something that you can form, whether good or bad. I'm going to say it again. You first form habits, then your habits will begin to form you. I'm going to say it again. When you first form habits, then your habits begin to form you. I can remember back when I was uh, I, no longer in sports. Uh, from time to time, I would do some intramural things, and a few friends of mine would, would smoke. I didn't smoke. But then again, I started drinking coffee, having a cigarette, and doing my homework or whatever, my studies. Then eventually, and I didn't even buy, they would give them to me. And so eventually, that habit began to form me. It became a habit. Did I like it? I actually didn't. But I began to be formed by the habit in itself. And so as I'm looking at this thing, I'm deciding, what am I going to do? Am I going to continue to do that, or am I going to start changing some things? And so the habit begins to form you. There was a guy by the name of Jerry West. Now, Jerry West is a basketball NBA icon. Matter of fact, it is his image that's on the NBA logo. It's Jerry West. And he played the game like it was supposed to be played back in that day. Here's what he said. You can't get much done in life if you only work on the days when you feel good. I'm going to say it again. I said you can't get much done in life if you only work on the days when which you feel good. There are some folks that will get up and say uh, they will get up and go to work on their last breath. But Lord, let them just feel a little blah on Sunday and where they be. Home. I didn't feel like it. Where are they going to get inspiration? Where are they going to get a word from God? It's not going to be sitting at home. Because if they sit at home, they'll end up doing something else. Amen? The Apostle James says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Notice the second part of that. He says, deceiving yourself. So turn to somebody and say, don't wait for inspiration. You can't wait until I get inspired. You do it even though you may not feel like it. I heard the word. I know what the word says, so I'm doing it. And so God says, you, you meditate on my word day and night. You'll begin to change. Your attitude will begin to change. As you meditate on my word day and night, Here's the X factor that's going to come into play. You'll have good success. Not a little success, but good success. Amen? The people who go far do so because they motivate themselves and give life their very best. The people who go far do so regardless of how they feel. To be successful in life, here's a word for you to write down. I must persevere. To be successful, I must persevere. Now, you remember I gave you the story about how at the end of the day, I had success in selling an insurance policy. But from that morning until the late afternoon, I was striking out. No one wanted to buy. Inside of me, there was a voice saying, well, you might as well pack your bags load up your car, and go on back home. But faith was in me saying, make one more call. When you are hearing what God has to say for you, and those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Can I get a witness? And so if the Holy Spirit is leading you, just one more rep, just one more shot, just one more problem, just keep going. Just keep going. Stay with it. Persevere. The enemy be, might be saying, give up on that one. They are never going to be, they're never going to turn out right. But perseverance says, I will keep on praying. 
Perseverance says, I will not throw them the towel. I'll stay with it. I'll stay with it. I'll stay with it. And I'm going to hear from God. Turn to somebody and say, don't surrender to the enemy. That's a key for your success. Because it's a habit you need to develop. You know, quitters never win. You will never get anywhere if all you quit everything. That's why I tell my family, if you start it, your ventures, we quit, we finish. We do not quit. I don't quit in the middle of a semester. I don't quit in the middle of a game. I don't quit. I don't quit. I don't quit. Because quitters will never win. It's easy to throw up your hands and say, oh, I just let somebody else do it. Or I can say, this is not for me. I'll go do something else. Finish. Turn to somebody and say, finish. You finish what you start. And then if that's, and if you finish and it didn't turn out like you wanted or, or you don't want to do that anymore, then you can go do something else. But if you start it, you finish it. If you are starting a problem at night and you can't get through, don't just throw up your hands. Here's the time to ask God for help. That's the time to say, Lord, you give wisdom. You give understanding. Direct my steps. And then you turn right back to the problem. I will say this. My God will show up every time. I'm a representative of the Most High God. He will show up every time. And you know, I used, to, I used to be a praying basketball player. When it was crunch time, I wanted to be on the free throw line. When it was crunch time, I said, let me shoot it. Because of the fact, I had confidence that God was with me. Turn to somebody say, don't surrender. Turn to somebody else and say, there's a war to be waged. Turn to somebody and say, you have a divine destiny ahead. Don't you surrender. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. The devil's trying to take you out. He's trying to change things. I'm here today to let you know, use the weapon that God has been giving you. If you want to develop a habit that will win, cause you to go to the next level, you learn to pray. Prayer is your answer. Prayer is your weapon. Use your prayer. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much. You stay with it. Don't you back up. Don't you surrender. You stay on your knees until you see a breakthrough. I heard somebody say push. I, I said, what does that mean? You pray until something happens. You stay with it. You continue to you in prayer. Let Be fervent in your prayer. Say, I am believing you, Lord. Be Go into a thanksgiving with your prayer. Begin to thank God for the victory. I know it's going to turn out because you are El Shaddai. You're the almighty. I wish I had some help here. You're El Shaddai in my life. You're the almighty God. You're the most efficient God. You can do anything but fail. I know it's going to turn out. No, it's going to turn out right. Praise him. I praise him. That's when I get my praise on the loudest because the enemy is trying to do his thing and God's trying to show me something. He's trying to show you something today. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. You pray in the Spirit. That's what Paul was saying. You let the Holy Ghost begin to lead you and guide you. He'll, he'll pinpoint. He'll call that laser faith come into action. He'll go to Spirit, send up spiritual missiles, begin to pull down the Spirit, hallelujah, of the enemy in the name of Jesus. All you got to have is a little faith. Woo! I feel a change. He's always working to keep you from having success in Christ. The devil is always working to keep you from having success in Christ. So don't surrender. Use your prayer weapon in the name of Jesus. Now Paul said this habit. You get the habit of renewing your mind. That's where you have to read. Turn to somebody and say, read out loud. Read out loud the word of God. If you got to go to the 23rd Psalm, read it out loud. Begin to acknowledge, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's the one that leads me. And he's going to lead me to the great places, green pastures. I'm going to sit down beside still waters. 
He's going to restore my soul. Paul said to renew our mind in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And so what is he saying? I begin to change the way I think. I begin to change the way I see myself. It's all about building up an image. Faith comes how? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Failing to pray diligently with all kinds of prayer in all situations is to surrender to the enemy. Your failure to read the word is giving you a lack of ammunition. You don't have anything to shoot. You have no ammunition. Say, read the word. Say, read it out loud. Now, you are what you are. You are what you do daily. I said you form habits, and the habits form you. Can I get a witness? So it is just as easy to form habits of success as it is to form habits of failure. I said it again. It's just as easy to form habits of success as it is to form habits of failure. The one who doesn't have a good self-image, the one who doesn't work faith, that one who doesn't say, I mix faith with the word of God and hallelujah with my attitude. Say, I got a kingdom attitude. And my attitude is success. So, it's just as easy. But change doesn't come through my struggle. Change does not come through my human effort if I'm trying to do it without God. If I'm trying to keep God out of it, all I will do is build up my frustration. But if I let God in my struggle, I'll have victory. So in order for me to have change in my life, I've got to begin to do things God's way. And if I do things God's way, God's way says I have renewing by the word of God that renews my mind, that changes my image of me. You see, all the armies in Israel, all of the army in Israel, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. They saw themselves unable to succeed. But David had an image of God in him. And everybody else was going around standing around in fear. David has this image of spending time with God, and God's telling him, I've been with you. David had faith for the bear. He had faith for the lion. And so when he had faith that won, and faith that won, when he's facing the Goliath in life, oh, y'all better be ready to be shouting right here. Because when he's facing Goliath, he had an image of victory. Why did he have an image of victory? Because he developed a habit of depending on God. God was with him with the bear. God was with him with the lion. God is going to be with him with Goliath. I'm going to repeat that for some of y'all looking at me in that tone of voice. I said, God was with David when he fought the bear. God was with David when he fought the lion. David had utmost confidence that God would be with him facing Goliath. He said, you come to me uh, with a sword and a spear, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Most High God. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. When you're tackling your problems, you need to come to them with the name of the Lord. Ah, uh -huh. y'all going to make me get into a chant. I'm trying to tell you I want to develop a habit of success. And I do so by facing my problems with faith. Can I get a witness? Change in our lives come as a result of having renewed myself by the word of God in my mind. Number three. When you live the life that says, I love God, God says, I already love you, you will find things will begin to change. You see, the reason that we sometimes err or sometimes sin is because we want to be out of love with God. We don't, I, don't want you, I don't want to love you right about now. And God says, okay. And so you go do things that are sinful. But if you stay walking in love with God, you won't purpose to sin. No, you won't. You won't. You won't. So when you learn to walk in love with God, your life will change. Things will change. 
you'll be able to speak and you'll see the results of it. And the last thing I want to say to you is turn to somebody and say, don't give up. I said, don't give up. Go up. Oh, y'all didn't catch me. I said, don't give up. Go up. I said, don't give up. You give up to go up. Uh huh. I said, you give up to go up. I said, don't give up. Go up. But in order to go up, you got to give up yourself to go up. You don't give up to the enemy. You give up to God. Oh, I'm going to help you now. This is where I'm going with that. I said, you give up to God in order to go up. Isaiah says, if you delight thyself in the Lord, God is telling you, when you how am I delighting myself in the Lord? Isaiah says, when you keep his Sabbath. That's Isaiah 58. When you keep his Sabbath, God says, I'm going to cause you to abound. God says, I'm going to give you the delight of your heart. God is saying something good is going to happen to you. Why? Because you're developing a habit of love. You're developing a habit of staying with God. And as you're walking with God and talking with God, something good is happening to you. Amen? I'm spending time in the presence of God. I'm telling you what. Success is waiting on you. I'm trying to get this in you young people. I'm telling you tonight, success is waiting on you. How do I know success is waiting on me? Because of the fact I'm going to spend time with God. And when I spend time with God, God tells me he loves me. When I spend time with God, he lets me know that he is my, he is my keeper. He tells me I'm your good shepherd. He tells me all these things that he says, I love you. God, you know, that's something when you say, I love God. God says, I love you. He says, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to walk with you. He's telling me that I'm going to have good success. God is telling me you, when you put me first, when you put my word first, something's about to happen to you. You're going to have good success. Who would not want to be successful? Am I talking to anybody here that wants to be successful? Am I talking to anybody here that desires to have the best that God has for them? Am I, I, if I'm talking to you, then listen, child of God, put God first. You love God first. You be, fall in love with the Word of God. When you spend three or four hours with the Word of God, I'm telling you, your life will begin to change. You say, Pastor, where do I start? Well, a good place to start is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Get to know Jesus. So where else do I start? I'd start with a proverb a day. There's a proverb for every day of the month. Today is the fourth. That'd be a good place to start with a fourth proverb today. And I start hearing about God sending his wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. He says, but in all you're getting, get understanding. I'm trying to break it down for you to have success. So I'm trying to break it down for you to walk in love, walk in victory, walk in all that God has for you. Say, it's mine. Say it again loud. As James Brown used to say, say it loud. Say it real loud. What's yours? Say success is mine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hit it, uh, Josh. See, God's word mixed with faith and a kingdom attitude is going to bring you what? I've said again, God's word mixed with faith and a kingdom attitude will bring you kingdom success. And I want you to succeed every day. Every day of your life. If y'all receive that this morning, do you really receive that this morning? Give the Lord a hand, praise, stand your feet, and let's just begin to thank God for the opportunity to get better every day. I said to you, you work at this thing daily. Did I not say that? Success is not a destination, it's a daily journey. You got to do things daily in order to win. You got to work on yourself. You don't 